before I start this video, I want to say I messed up one of the names of the characters. Most of the time when I say Sagata, I actually mean my Kaiko. Uh, I put on screen when I mess up a name. Welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Cursed Anime, Heaven's Lost Property. So this was released in 2009, so this is really fucking old. It's lightly sci-fi themed. It's a haram centered around an annoying person. Let's dive deeper. So the main character, Tomo, has a dream, and he has a dream for his entire life that he meets a girl, falls in love with her, floats up to heaven. The real story starts when Sohara tries waking up Tomo because he's going to be late to school. I'm unsure if they're best friends, but they're definitely childhood best friends. They live in a small town called Sarami. The girl and the guy walk to school. The guy keeps falling asleep and bored, has the same dream. This is apparently usual. But there's also this crazy dude who has a laboratory, all sorts of shit. He runs a club called the New World Discovery Club, and he created it. After pretty much finding out about the New World or something like that, how there's a world above them and floating around Earth, his name is Sagata. He tries testing out his weird-ass theory. He jumps from a roof with a paraglider. Tomo tries to convince his friend Sagata from jumping off the roof of a glider. She cares more about a hundred million dollar death benefit from insurance than him. Tomo has weird dreams from the new world. The lab dude says those are actually connected to the new world. Tomo likes peace and quiet and now that's starting to collapse so he's told to go to a cherry tree and right above it is a hole in the sky where a sexualized angel also known as uh, Ikaro falls out of the sky into a big hole in the ground. He starts running away then some runes fall around. Then he realizes that's the girl from his dreams. He runs back and carries her to safety. A pillar is about to fall on them. Then the angel wakes up and lifts them both off the ground into the sky. Then the angel collar starts to print a steel chain which prints into Tomo's hand. They slowly float down to earth. She claims to be a pet type angel. We later learn this is not true at all. She also claims that he is her master. This is actually true. They go to sleep. The angeloids are apparently just slave androids. Um, they're not quite cyborgs, however, I'll talk about this later on. He almost slips up and admits that he wants to fuck her. He does later on, but at the last second he says he wants money. Then the angel creates a billion dollars with her making device. It's, it's been two months, I don't really remember what it was called. Basically, she also has a transport device or something that's connected somehow. Uh, I'll put it on screen. She apparently first was woken up by him, and that de by de facto makes him her master. As the anime progresses, Ikaro tries her hardest to try to be more human to please her master, to the point where she even loves him. Towards the end, Ikaro admits that she's a strategic type angel, and he already knew. So another thing we learn later on is Sagata's father operates a mafia or some really fucking sketchy organization, which has been the family since the Shogun at times, or like 19th century, or like 18th, well, if it's 19th and early. We learn this when Tomo accidentally gets his house burned down, and Sagata lets him stay with her. On the first, or maybe second night, Tomo is almost killed by Sagata's clan after she tricked him into going into the private pool, where if you go and you aren't one of them, they kill you no matter what. He also got out of it because of Ikaro, like he gets out of pretty much every situation. Well, on the topic of that clan, I should mention that they actually lock up Tomo and Tahara towards the end, and they fake a simulation where they're on an abandoned island in the middle of the Pacific. And right when things are about to go crazy, um, yeah, the simulation ends. There's a lot of minor details I did not include. Check the description for more info. Now back to the start, originally when Tomo learns what Ikaro can do, they go around and start fucking with everything, turning invisible and stuff. At the end of this, he messes up and she accidentally removes all people on earth. Now something really strange is it's just the people's clothes on the ground and all their stuff are left behind. I mean, it leaves the sidewalks looking like LA times two. He accidentally orders her to kill herself and she is so sad. However, he accidentally orders her at the last second to reset to the night before which they do. Here's some info on the three main starting characters. So Tomo is a pervert who gets angry at Aikaro whenever she does anything wrong, or really anything. Sahara is a dick and constantly hits and leads on Tomo. However, she acts like she hates him, which delays progress in this arc. God damn, these characters fucking suck. Later on, a new angeloid shows up. Her name is Nymph. She was supposedly sent by heaven to take her home. This is the first time we actually get to see a glimpse of what the heaven is. And to say the least, um, well, uh, I, I, I hate to say it, but I don't think 
I don't think the title of the show is very accurate because it doesn't seem very heavenly like at all. Her master beats her and eventually orders her to be killed because she messed up on bringing back Icaro. Her name there is Uranus Queen. Now I'm very confused if this is actually heaven or not. The title implies so, but when they show the New World people in their cloudy world, which heaven usually is appeared as very cloudy, uh, the rulers appear as vengeful, unforgiving, and sadistic. All of which are the opposite of what heaven is usually depicted as. Now, actually, maybe this is heaven if you are a Jehovah's Witness. I don't know, they seem pretty fucking strict. Of course, what heaven looks like is very subjective, and it really depends on what Christian denomination you're asking. Something pretty sad is that the angeloids actually don't convey emotions on their face. However, Icaro can feel emotions and can cry, but this is the same stoic facial expression each time. Apparently they're androids, but Nymph showed proof that she has some sort of beating heart. However, Icaro showed proof of her having reactors. The androids must be AI, because there's no way they're organic organisms, and the heaven doesn't seem to be depicted as very heaven-like. Something I learned from the show is that even in 2009, there would be people willing to fuck AI. Some things I really don't like are how Tomo's always being depicted as very irritated Icaro. Tomo is always also drawn in a chippy form, which is funny a few times, but it gets annoying quick. The anime also never shows a good look at what heaven or any backstory to heaven is. It just leaves very empty, vague interpretations of what it could be, which could be a good cliffhanger if I did not have to wait 15 fucking years. You know, I don't want to have to wait most of my life for this shit. After leaving coming back two months later, I would say my favorite character is Ikara, and on an entertainment quality, I would say this is an 8 out of 10. Very entertaining. Not peak entertainment, but close. Characters are a solid 5. Tomo brings that down a lot. Sahara also. The show's quality is an 8 out of 10. I really like the quality. Overall, I will say this is a 21 out of 30. That does it for this video. Next cursed anime review, Watamo.